Good morning, and welcome to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that feeds you the Word of God. And our scripture feeding this morning comes from Revelation chapter 14, and I will be reading verses 6 through 7 from the New King James Version. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and springs of water. My subject for this morning is the gospel will be preached to the whole world. Judgment is coming, but during this present age, the angels aren't privileged to preach the gospel. Mm. That responsibility has been given to God's people, believers. Amen. While nations will fear the beast and give honor to the beast, mm -hmm. this heavenly messenger will summon people to fear and honor God and God alone. Amen. It's a reminder that God is the creator and he and he alone deserves our worship. Yeah. But this isn't the gospel message as we know it, mm -hmm. but rather it's a return to the message of Romans chapter 1 verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. No one can claim by his or her own efforts or merits to be good in God's sight. Amen. Not you, not the masses, not anyone. All people everywhere deserve God's condemnation for their sin. Yeah. And a common objection to belief in God, a question that people always ask, mm -hmm. is how can a loving God send someone to hell, especially someone who has never heard about Christ? But God has plainly revealed himself in creation to all people, and yet people reject even this basic knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Also, people have an inner sense, a consciousness of what God requires, but they choose not to live up to it. Or to put it another way, people's moral standards are always better than their behavior. Amen. When people suppress God's truth in order to live their own way, mm -hmm. in order to live like they want to live, yeah. they have no excuse. As a matter of fact, they are without excuse yeah. because they know the truth. And because they know the truth, they will have to endure the consequences of ignoring the truth. Mm -hmm. And as believers, we have this assurance that that the gospel will be preached to the whole world. Amen. Some people may even wonder why we need missionaries if people can know God through nature, through creation. But although people know that God exists, their wickedness blinds them to the truth and missionaries sensitively expose their sin and point them to Christ. And although people may believe there's a God, they refuse to commit themselves to God. Thus missionaries help persuade them by sharing God's word and by pointing out the dangerous consequences of their actions. Missionaries help the church obey the great commission of our Lord, but most most importantly, although nature reveals God, people need to be told about Jesus and how through Jesus they can be they can have a personal relationship with God. Amen. But knowing that God exists is not enough. People must learn that God is loving and that he sent his son to demonstrate his love for us and they must be shown how to accept God's forgiveness of their sins. And all creation bears witness to God's existence as well as to his power and wisdom. Nonetheless, the beast will convince people that he's in charge of the world and that their destinies are in his hands. And the message of the angel calls us back to basics. God is the creator. Worship and serve him. The fear of the Lord, not the fear of the beast, is the source of wisdom. And the Lord 
Jesus Christ is going to be victorious over the world. He's going to triumph over evil and he's going to bring righteousness and godliness to the earth. The kingdom of God will reign upon the earth. And we know this for sure because scripture reveals it to us. This is the purpose of this great chapter to show us that the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ over the world Mm -hmm. and its ungodliness is assured. And in rapid fire, Christ gives John this assurance, revealing the triumph of Christ. And we can know and be assured that Jesus Christ is going to triumph. The victory of the Lamb is assured. This is the great assurance given to believers. The gospel will be preached to the whole world. The messenger, an angel, will have the everlasting gospel to give to the whole world. Verse 6 says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. This is world evangelism, Mm. the gospel of the end time. And the messenger who will have the gospel will be an angel. But does this mean that he will have the gospel to preach himself? or that he will have the gospel to give to believers to preach? Or is this just a picture that in the end time the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world? Mm. Christ himself, when he was on earth, predicted the evangelization of the whole world. Matthew 24, verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. There are those who think that in the end time, evil will be so rampant that believers won't be able to preach and spread the word of God Mm -hmm. because they will be on the run from the holy cost of the Antichrist. They think that God will have to change his method of getting the gospel to the world by going back to using angels just like he did in the Old Testament period of history. Luke chapter 2 verse 10 says, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. There are others who think this is a vision symbolizing the preaching of the gospel to the world. Whatever the case, remember this. God's people and the Jews are going to be scattered all over the earth, Mm -hmm. hiding and scratching for food wherever they can. They will be fleeing. They will be running in order to escape the holy cost of the Antichrist. But God's people, his true servants, will always share the gospel wherever they are and to whomever they feel they can trust. Remember also that the earth will help hide and feed the Jews and the followers of Christ just as they have in every holy cause because not every unbeliever is hard hearted Mm -hmm. even in the end time. Revelation chapter 12 verse 16 says but the earth helped the woman and the earth opened up his mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon Satan has spewed out of his mouth. The Jewish servants, the 144,000 who have committed themselves to minister to God's people, will certainly be witnessing. Mm -hmm. They will no doubt be moving out into the wilderness areas and hiding places of the world themselves Mm -hmm. because that's where God's people, the Jews, will be. And that's the only place the 144,000 Jewish servants will probably be safe. Mm. Also remember that civilization and the population are going to be shrunk much smaller than what it is now because there will be vast devastation upon the earth and whole areas of the earth will become uninhabitable, totally unsuitable for human life. In addition to all of this, think of the witnessing that will be going on among the numberless multitude of Gentiles that will be converted throughout the tribulation of the end time because God's people, his true followers, are never silent. They always 
please talk about and share Christ among one another and to those who befriend and help them. Mm -hmm. And one thing is sure, when so many earthly horrors and supernatural catastrophes and events are taking place in the end time, no believer, no true genuine believer will ever keep silent, not when he's with other believers and certainly not when he's with people who are kind enough to help hide him from the Holy Cause. Amen. The point is this. In the last days, there will be witnessing. The gospel will be preached to the whole world. Yes. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 says, Go into all the world mm -hmm. and preach the gospel to every creature. The glorious gospel will be proclaimed by God's people. But if for some unknown reason they hush, mm -hmm. if for some unknown reason they become quiet, they keep silent about the glorious gospel, God will proclaim the gospel of his son through angels. Amen. Luke chapter 19 verse 40 says, But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones will would immediately cry out. Amen. As Jesus himself said to the religionists of his day, if the people keep silent, mm -hmm. if you keep silent, then the very stones themselves will cry out. Amen. The gospel must be proclaimed to the whole world. It must be proclaimed to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, that's local, and in all Judea, that's state, and Samaria, that's national, and to the end of the earth, that's universal. Amen. Not a single place must be missed. Matthew 28 verses 19 through 20, which is the Great Commission, says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Verse 7 says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and springs of water this angel with the loud voice had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth and to proclaim it to every nation every tribe every tongue and every people. Yeah. There are three points in this message. First, the message to fear God. And fear refers to respect, reverential awe, and the realization of God's holiness. Amen. Second, the message is to give glory to God. And glory means to recognize God's power, giving him the honor he's due. And third, the message is to worship God. And worship means to adore, obey, reverence, and to focus positive attention on God. Amen. The angel's message calls for people to fear God and to worship him because the hour of his judgment has come. But the eternal gospel is still the good news. Amen. Even in these final moments of judgment, God gives people the opportunity to repent. Mm -hmm. And this may be the final fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy. And unless the Lord shortens that time of calamity, that time of disaster, the entire human race will be destroyed. But for the sake of his chosen ones, mm -hmm. believers, he has shortened those days. Amen. Mark chapter 13 verse 20 says, And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he chose, he shortened the days. 
The people of the world have had their chance to proclaim their allegiance to God. Mm -hmm. And now God's great judgment is about to begin. Amen. And this most likely, however, is a final worldwide appeal to all people to recognize the one true and living God. Amen. And no one will have the excuse of never hearing God's truth. Mm -hmm. Because this is a vision of a scene in the future, it's unknown if God will at that point give the world one more chance. What is known, however, is that he offers that chance to those who read and study John's vision now. Yeah. And since the message is proclaimed to everyone, mm -hmm. no one will have the excuse that they didn't know the gospel message. Amen. As Paul said in Romans chapter 1 verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Hallelujah. People have no excuse whatsoever for not knowing God. This is a key theme of Revelation. Whenever there has been a time of judgment, there has always been a preceding time of warning when people are given the opportunity to repent. However, there are those who refuse to repent, who want nothing to do with God, mm -hmm. thus their punishment is justified. Think about it this way. If you're not adoring, obeying, and reverencing God, mm -hmm. then you're not worshiping God, Amen. and you have no fear of the realization of God's holiness. And fear and worship are the very subjects that will be flooding the minds and conversations of people in the midst of the holy cost and the catastrophic judgments that will be destroying so much of the earth. Yes. You must fear God Amen. because judgment is coming mm. but you must also worship God the creator you must repent you must turn from the worship of sin and the worship of the antichrist and worship God and if you don't believe guess what you are an antichrist yeah. and this is not a different gospel to fear God yeah. and at the same time to give him glory clearly implies repentance yeah. true repentance and remember the this. Repentance is not forgiveness as so many people think. And no scripture better defines repentance than the amplified version of Matthew chapter 3 verse 2. Repent. Think differently. Change your mind. Regretting your sins and changing your conduct for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Matthew 4 17 says from that time Jesus began to preach crying out repent. Change your mind for the better. Heartily amend your ways with abhorrence, with disgust, hatred of your past sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance is the message, but also the words from that time are extremely significant mm -hmm. because they indicate urgency, persistence, and perseverance. Three excellent words describing the obsession of Christ with his mission and message yeah. that the gospel will be preached to the whole world and his mission and message had two major points. Christ preached repentance mm -hmm. and he preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. And so again repentance means to change, to turn, to change your mind, to turn your life. It's a turning away from sin and turning toward God. It's a change of mind. It's forsaking your sin yeah. is putting sin out of your thoughts and behavior, resolving never to think or do it again. And the change is turning away from lying and stealing and cheating. It's turning away from immorality, cursing and drunkenness and all the other so-called glaring sins of the flesh. Yeah. But the change is also turning away from the silent sins of the spirit, mm -hmm. such as self-centeredness, selfishness, envy, bitterness, and pride. It's turning away from the sin of covetousness, anger, evil thoughts, hopelessness, laziness, jealousy, and lust. Very simply, repentance involves 
two turns, a negative turning away from sin and a positive turning toward God. It's turning to God and away from sin, whether they are sins of thought or sins of action. And repentance is more than sorrow. Sorrow may or may not be involved in repentance. You may repent simply because you will to act to change, or you may repent because you sense an agonizing sorrow within. But the sense and feeling of sorrow is not repentance. Repentance is both the change of mind and the actual turning of your life away from sin and toward God. Amen. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Without repentance, your sins cannot be forgiven because Christ can't forgive sin that you continuously walk in. Amen. Therefore, to be forgiven, you must repent. And Christ preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And no glory is ever acceptable to God other than the glory of a truly repentant heart. Amen. This is a message to fear God. And if you think about it, few people fear God. Mm -hmm. But this is what God calls the day of grace. The day when he reaches out for people in love, but the day of his judgment is coming. Amen. This is the very message of revelation. Therefore, we must fear God even in this day of grace and love. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 17 says, And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. God tolerates our rebellion and denial of him for now, mm. but only for now, only to give us a chance to be saved yeah. and to escape the coming judgment. But this chance will soon pass. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we must repent. We must fear God and we must worship God. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 says, And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. This is the message to worship God. Psalm 29 2 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. As believers, we have the assurance that the redeemed will be with Jesus. And as believers, we have the assurance that the gospel will be preached to the whole world. And that the messenger and angel will have the everlasting gospel to give to the whole world. Amen. Thus, the whole point of this message is to fear God. Mm -hmm. because judgment is coming yeah. and we're to worship God because he's our creator. The gospel will be preached to the whole world Amen. and as believers we should become obsessed with the mission and message of the Lord. We should be gripped and enslaved by our obsession of Christ and here's why and it's because we no longer have to seek light. Mm. Even though the light of the world has come, so many people are still in darkness because Amen. they have not heard yeah. the gospel truth preached. As believers, in our laziness or our lack of urgency, we have hoarded the message, mm. failing to go forth as God's messengers of light to preach the true gospel. Yet the ministry of believers is the same as Jesus Christ, to preach the gospel to the world. Yeah. Even though all other works and ministries are important, the primary ministry of all believers, all true genuine believers, is to preach the gospel, to proclaim the gospel to a lost and dying yeah. world, a world that's crying out for help. And the message of believers is the same message is Christ, the message to fear God, the message to worship God, the message to give God glory, the message to repent, yeah. and the message that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. And so again, the message is to fear God and to give him glory, which is a clear sign of repentance, true repentance. All other subjects to be preached to the world are important, but the primary message must be these two points. 
We must preach repentance mm -hmm. and we must preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and we don't have much time. Amen. But think about this. As believers, we're given the highest honor in the world. We're sent into the world on the same mission as God's very own son. Hallelujah. Imagine having the same mission and the same message as God's very own son. The mission and message to preach the gospel truth to the whole world. If we will approach this mission like God's own son, mm -hmm. imagine how the kingdom of heaven will be increased and Satan's kingdom will be decreased. Yes. As true, genuine, born again Christian believers filled with the Holy Spirit, we are absolutely on mission for Christ to preach the truth of the gospel yes. to the whole world. And let me say it again, the truth, telling people what they need to hear, yes. not what they want to hear. Hallelujah. I believe we can make a difference for the kingdom of heaven. Will we do it? I believe we can, and I believe we will. Let's accomplish the task for which we've been called. Yeah. Let's preach the gospel, the true gospel, to the whole world every time we have opportunity. As believers, as true, genuine believers, this is our mission, our purpose, our message. Let's glorify God and his son, Jesus Christ, by preaching the gospel truth to the whole world and fear God. Worship God because he's the creator and preach the gospel truth to the whole world that souls may be saved because judgment is coming. And if you're listening to this message, you've already heard God's truth and you know that God's final judgment won't be put off forever. Have you joyfully received the everlasting good news? Well, Have you repented of your sins? Well, Have you confessed your sins and trusted in Christ to save you? If so, you have nothing to fear from God's judgment because the judge of all the earth is your savior. Preach the gospel truth to the whole world. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. Let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Father God, as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, we pray that your word has gone forth with Holy Ghost power, that it will change lives, that as they hear the true gospel truth, they will surrender their lives to you with repentant hearts, believing your every word in obedience to your will. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your word. Let your will be done in each of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.